In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to apply a Ken Burns style of pan and zoom effect not to a still image, but to a video clip. This comes as a request of one of my subscribers. Oftentimes we look at the Ken Burns style and we see that he uses many historical pictures and makes it look as though the camera is moving across the images. Can you do that to a video? Yes, you can. We'd like to show you an example of a somewhat finished product, and then we'll show you how to do that yourself when you apply this technique to video. Now the best kind of video to use in this situation is something where the camera is relatively stable. You can do it in any kind of video, but this is probably what it's designed for best. So I've got a video clip here, and as you can see the camera basically is stable in this kind of situation. It will tend to produce the best results for the least amount of work. So what we're going to do is see if we can do some panning and zooming with this particular video clip. I'm going to click on the clip in the timeline and then from the menu above I'm going to click on the tools button and from the drop down I'll use crop zoom and pan. That opens up my crop zoom and pan window. We have other tutorials on many of the details of this tool. We're just going to highlight a few things in this particular tutorial. First of all note that you have in the main screen, that's your editing screen, then in the upper right you have a preview of what the finished product will look like. Below that you have your aspect ratio. You have your position controls. The default is center, X and Y coordinates, which is 0.5 and 0.5. And then you have your scale, again, which is full scale. And you can use the sliders or you can change these elements here by typing in different numbers. We're going to use the mouse control since it's the easiest to show. Now, the crop, zoom, and pan tool begins with full screen centered. And so we have a keyframe at the very beginning. If we play this, we'll see that it just plays like any normal video. No change whatsoever. But what we'd like to do is add some Ken Burns style effects to this. How do we do that? You can move anywhere you want to on the slider below the picture and click. And you notice you have your time code underneath the picture. That tells you where you are. So you can move your slider wherever you like to go and you can move by frame if you want to get very precise by clicking these or using the comma key and the period key. So you move your slider to where you want and let's assume we want to stay centered in full screen for a bit. That's where these controls come in handy. These set keyframes. Now the one on the left with a single plus will simply add a keyframe. The one next to it will duplicate either the previous or next keyframe. If I click on that now, I only have a previous keyframe, so the next keyframe is grayed out. I'll click on that, and now it, it, it has the same value as the previous keyframe. So between these two points in time, what will happen is it will be centered and full screen. Let's move a little bit more to the right. And we see we're at 4 seconds and 26 frames. I'm going to just set another keyframe. And now I'm going to change the value of the keyframe by using the mouse. And so I'll click on one of the handles and we'll zoom in slightly on the bridge. So we've changed the scale of the image. And notice in the upper right corner we have a preview of what it will look like. And let's move over a bit farther. And now we're going to do the duplicate keyframe again. That will keep the values between the fourth keyframe and the third keyframe the same. So we'll back it up a bit. We can play and you can see it's stable for a bit. And then it zooms in. And then it stays ag that stable again. And again, the last keyframe controls what you have for the remainder of the video. Let's do some more with it. Let's move over a little bit farther. 
And now we're going to change the value of this, but first of all by setting a keyframe. And then we'll ho hover over the little blue dot in the center and we'll drag to the left. And so that will move the image, as it were, the camera to the left side. Notice that, again, that's reflected in the preview screen in the upper right. And so we'll leave it there for a while. I'll click over here and set another keyframe. And it already inherited the value of the previous keyframe, so it didn't matter which diamond I used. And now we'll leave it that way for a while. And now we're going to move to the right. We'll set another keyframe. Only on this one we're going to move it back and we'll zoom it in even tighter. Let's look at what we have so far. When we play this, we see it's stable. And then we have one zoom, tighten shot, and then it slides to the left and it freezes there for a bit. And then it tightens up and moves to the right. And so that's an easy way to uh, accomplish the Ken Burns style of effect, not with a still image, but with a video clip in CyberLink PowerDirector.